club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing. Art club, there's gonna be some painting and drawing. Some of the time we must do drawing and painting, but most of the time we will do painting and drawing. Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club! Hello and welcome to this very special festive... Actually, scrap that. I want a celebrity introduction. Can we arrange that? Brilliant. And we are extra specially happy this morning because we're going to be joined by an absolute art genius. We love him and he goes by the name of Olaf. Hi, Olaf. Hi, Rylan. See you later. That was Rylan there. I'll probably mention that I'm great mates with Rylan now on several occasions throughout the show. Anyway, let's get ready. Let's get going. It's time for a festive art club. There's a few things I need to run through first. Uh, there's a couple of rules if you've never watched art club before. The first rule is there are no rules. The second rule is ignore the first rule. And the third rule is always wear stripes. Now there is one exception and that is if you're wearing a Christmas jumper. But I've gone for the belt and braces approach and I'm actually wearing a Christmas jumper and some stripes there, just to be on the safe side. you also notice I'm wearing a festive hat, got a little festive blue tip on my head there. Quite nice to see that. Hi there, it's editing Olaf from the future. I've actually recorded everything and I'm going through all of the footage and looking at it and I thought that this hat would be hilarious with the knitted tit on top. However, it does appear in quite a few of the overhead shots, so I'd like to apologise for that. Uh, we could turn it into a fun game. Every time you see it coming into shot, just shout at the screen, Knitted Tit! Go on, give it a go. Knitted Tit! Apologies again. Bye! Uh, we've got a lot of fun things to get going through, so I shan't go on too long. Uh, we are going to be making some... Uh, Magritte-inspired surreal Christmas decorations that look a bit like this. Uh, it's Father Christmas with a little sprout in front of his face. Uh, what else are we doing? Oh yeah, did I mention that I met Rylan and we did a lot of Play-Doh fun and I've got lots of Play-Doh here. So we're going to be making some Play-Doh Christmas trees that look a bit like this. Uh, what else? Oh, we're going to be drawing. We're going to be doing a two-part drawing. That's going to be coming soon and it's going to be... One of Rudolph's lesser known cousins. Uh, you'll enjoy that, hopefully. Oh, we've got Artist of the Week uh, is a guy called L.S. Lowry. I picked him because he does like lots of wintry scenes. That should be a lot of fun. Oh, and I've done a song. I've joined up with my good friend Harriet Brain and we've done a really catchy song. The chorus goes like this. Lowry, Lowry, Lowry. Play that in full later on. Oh, and there's going to be loads of festive Christmassy jokes like this one. Why was the snowman in the greengrocer? He was picking his nose. <laughs> Quite good, wasn't it? There's going to be loads more of those. Some of them will be better than others. Uh, I think we need to get cracking and get straight on into it. What do you reckon? Oh, rewind, quick edit. I'm going to do a mime for a Christmas song and you need to try and guess what Christmas song it is and I will let you know at the very end. Nearly forgot that bit. We'll put that, we'll, we'll cut that in in the edit. Don't worry, don't worry. So here is the mime. Do you know what that is? Any guesses? We'll do it one more time. I mean, it's pretty tricky if you get it a million points, but I'll let you know the answer at the end. And yeah, anyway, unedit, let's get on with the show. Who makes sure the elves have clean hands? Sanitizer claws. <laughs> The first thing we're going to do is a two-part drawing. It's a Christmassy two-part drawing. It's going to be one of Rudolph's many, many distant cousins. Uh, you've probably never heard of him. Uh, uh, there's a good reason that you've probably never heard of him. The family don't like to talk about him, but we're going to get going. All you'll need is a sheet of paper. I've got a sheet of plain A4 paper here and something to draw with. I've got a big fat brush marker here. You can use whatever you like, to be honest. I've got, love, I've got so much choice, but I always end up using the same one. And as always, I always like to start with the nose first. And I do that funny kind of almost like a W, but with an extra bit. I call it a treble U nose. And I'm going to do that sort of just above the center. 
sort of around here and it goes like that. There's my treble U. And then we just join it at the top there. And that is gonna be his nose. And he's kind of got quite a long snout because he's a reindeer. So we just extend two lines up like that. And we're gonna do a kind of a rounded triangle shape for his jaw. But before we do that, we're gonna draw a little line coming off the nose. And then we're gonna draw his mouth. His mouth looks like a, I wanna say a kidney bean or a stumpy little sausage. The kind of sausage that you'd get a pig in blanket, a blanket wrapped around it. That's what I'm trying to say, you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna give him two goofy little teeth. There and there, and a little bit of a tongue. The tongue is like a, an M or a kind of a bird shape. Anyway, where are we? Oh, I'm gonna do that triangle bit that I said about. So I'm gonna start around about there and it's gonna go down here, around, and then kind of back to a similar kind of point there. So that's gonna be his big jaw. And we're gonna give him two eyes. So I'll do one little circle here and one little circle there. Give him a little dot in the eye, a little dot in that eye. And then we'll do a little curve going over the top from that end of the triangle and we'll do the same there. So you should end up with something that looks a bit like that. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is a couple of little lines in the forehead, because all of the best people have those. And a big curve that goes like that. Now we're gonna draw a line there and a line there. And then all we need to do now are his ears. We're gonna do an ear, like a leaf shape really there, and an ear, like a leaf shape there. And we add a little line in, add a little line in there. And we've nearly finished his head. So we're gonna give the antlers on top and then we're done. So the first antler is gonna be a curved line like that. And we'll do the same kind of going out to there. And we'll do, I mean, this bit can be quite random. So I'm gonna do like four kind of shapes there and I'll try and keep it relatively symmetrical so we'll do four on that side and then I'll come down a bit and I'll do two come down a bit and do two and then I'll do a bit curving up there and then a bit curving up there and there you go there's his antler reindeers reindeer antlers you know what I mean uh, that is the first part of our drawing we'll do the body and I will do you the bit that kind of shows you why he's kind of not really talked about. That'll all get revealed towards the end of the show. But hopefully you've got something that looks like that and I will see you soon for the end bit and there's gonna be loads more fun stuff in between. But anyway, let's have a joke. How did Darth Vader know what Luke had got him for Christmas? He felt his presence. <laughs> Well, that was quite funny, wasn't it? Right, the next thing we're gonna do is make a Magritte-inspired decoration. Now, if you don't know Magritte, he is an artist, and I actually featured him in one of my last art clubs. And this particular decoration, it looks a bit like that. It's basically Father Christmas with a Brussels sprout hanging in front of his face. It's kind of based on one of Magritte's famous paintings. And if you read a thing called The Week Junior, it's like a kind of a news magazine thing for kids. It's actually quite educational. Uh, I did actually explain in The Wig Junior how to make this, so you may have already seen this. If you have, yours should be brilliant and send them in. I did actually get sent some brilliant ones from a school in Ripley. Uh, I'll put them up here somewhere. Don't they look good? They're brilliant. And there will be a template that you can download if you don't wanna do the drawing bit. If you just wanna copy my one, then you can print out the template and then color it in if you want an easier life. So you can do that or you can make them from scratch. I'm gonna try and make one from scratch. Uh, you can too and see how good it looks. Uh, actually, I might play a little bit of my educational <laughs> Magritte bit, just so you can get the reference of what this is actually based on. One minute artist, René Magritte. René Magritte was a Belgian artist. Magritte was considered a surrealist artist, which means weird, strange, and unexpected. He used to like to create artworks that would combine two things that don't necessarily normally go together, like eyes and skies, or fireplaces with trains coming out of them. 
A recurring theme in a lot of Magritte's paintings are men in bowler hats and boring suits. In this painting, he's got them falling from the sky like rain. And in this painting, you can't see the man's face because in front of it, he's painted a big green shiny apple. There you go. Hopefully you didn't learn too much from that. Anyway, what you'll need is a sheet of card. I've got an A4 sheet here. Actually, I only need it to be A5. So I'm going to fold it in half and then using my scissors and being very careful. We are going to need scissors for this one. I'm going to cut it in half and this way if you do make a mistake you've got another half of card there that you can use uh it's not the straightest but it doesn't matter because i'm going to be cutting it out anyway i'll leave that over there with my week junior i'm not getting paid to advertise the week junior by the way so but if anyone from the week junior is listening and wants to pay me some money then yeah you can please uh right what you will need to do is make our father christmas first so if you look he kind of folds flat like, like that. And actually, if I, if I weigh that down there, hopefully you'll be able to kind of see mine as I'm drawing it. And then hopefully that'll make it easier. I'm gonna use a pen. Oh no, where's my pen? Where's my good pen? Ah, over here. And I'm gonna start with the nose and I'm gonna start with the nose around about here. And it looks like a bit like that. And then I'm going to do those two rectangular eyebrows. So one there and one there. And I'm going to do little dots for his eyes just underneath his eyebrows. Because he's looking kind of a little bit like, ugh, a bit cheesed off because he's got this Brussels, giant Brussels sprout hanging in front of his face. Uh, I'll do a straight mouth like so. And I will do another rectangle for the brim of his hat, which kind of goes around about there. I mean, if I'm going too quickly for you, then you can always pause this. Uh, I'm going to do a ball for his hat bobble there. I'm not going to draw a blue tip on his hat because I'm just not. I'm going to curve a line there and curve a line there. And then the rounded bit of his hat is going to go all the way over and down to the bobble on the end and then I'm going to do a line from there to there and then I'm going to draw his beard I don't know whether I've done his face too big or not but his beard's going to finish around about there so I'll draw a line like so and right back round and I'm going to do two ears so I'll start with this ear and then this ear might just tuck behind the hair bobble a bit like that and if you like you can draw like the inside bits of the ears do like a couple of little kind of squiggly lines like that, sometimes a line there. Now we're going to do his body. He's kind of a bit hunched up, so I'll start his body sort of there, and it goes straight down like that, and the same on that side. Try and keep that as straight as possible. If it's a bit wavy, it doesn't matter. It might just fall over though when you try and get him to stand up, but that's what sellotape's for. Right, we're going to draw a line to about there and a line to about there. They're gonna be these arms. Like I said, there is a template that you'll be able to get downline, downline, downline it. You can downline it on load. Onload it downline. You can download it online. There'll be a link to that in the bottom comments to this video somewhere. We'll do the belt buckle next. That's a rectangle with a smaller rectangle inside. This, to be fair, is based a lot on rectangles. So it's quite an easy one to draw, he says. And then we do the rest of the belt there. And then we do this kind of fur trim down the middle. It goes right down the middle like so. And I have done this really quickly. Take your time over it if you like. Now you'll notice here, we've got these two kind of triangular flaps. All you do around about sort of where the arm line is, you do a diagonal line like that. And then a diagonal line like that. Hopefully they'll be relatively similar sizes. Now. Before we start cutting out, what we will also need is a Brussels sprout that is going to be roughly the size of his face, but so kind of covers his face. So I'm going to kind of fit mine in around about there. Oh, just enough room there to fit a nice Brussels sprout in. And they are basically miniature cabbages and they do make you, um, they do make you fart a bit. 
I always say I'm going to be releasing my own fragrance. It's kind of a better way of saying farting. It makes it sound like you've got an aftershave coming out, like all the celebrities do. Anyway, let's get on with this. I'm sure mums and dads don't need to know about me releasing my own fragrance on Christmas Day. So it's this kind of shape, not quite a nice round shape, because like I said, we're, we're mini cabbages. And before I join that up, if I just kind of do like a little curvy line, it comes down to about there. And then that kind of a curvy line, and then draw a line there. And these kind of leaf bits, I don't know if you can see there. So it's almost like branching off there, branching off there, branching off there. And then sort of the same on there, that side. Up. And once we've coloured it in, that'll look perfect. Actually, before we cut it out, we'll, we'll do the colouring in. I'm going to use some felt tips, I think, for this. Right, now that's coloured in, what you'll need to do is cut it out. Uh, you're going to use some scissors here, so you might want to get an adult to do this for you. So yeah, definitely be careful when you're using scissors. And also, uh, I've got a milk bottle here. The reason for that is because connecting my sprout to my Father Christmas there, I've used a thin strip of plastic from a milk bottle. You don't have to use that. You can use card if you want to. But if you do use this, it is like see-through and it's, it doesn't fold, which is why I quite like it. It's kind of bendy. But if you do use a milk bottle, definitely get an adult to do it because that is quite tricky. Uh, Don't forget to cut out your sprout as well. Right, now it's all been cut out. What we're gonna do is get our plastic strip and we are gonna use some sellotape to stick that plastic strip to the back of our Santa Claus. So, where's my sellotape? Let me get a little bit of sellotape, cut that off. Around about there. Don't lose the end. Otherwise, I'll be there all day. So we'll stick that just there like that. If you've got a little bit that's kind of stuck over the edge, you can just trim that off there. And hopefully that should curve around, make it curve. And we'll get the Brussels sprout around about sort of there. And we'll get that to stick it's a bit fiddly getting it stuck the right way round, but I think you should be able to do it. Let me. So that is going there. So I need to stick that like that. A little tab there, and that should. I mean, you might need to kind of bend it and curve it. And what you need to do finally is bend these tabs back. So fold those tabs back. One and two. And my card's a bit bendy, so I might just bend him back a little bit. So hopefully he will stand up. I mean, he looks like he's gonna fall forwards. If yours looks like it's gonna fall forward, what you can always do, and I'll show you this with a pencil if I've got one, what you can do is draw a little diagonal line, very slight diagonal line there, and a very slight diagonal line sort of there. And if you cut just along those diagonal lines, they don't have to be big at all. In fact, I might have even made those too big, so I might just make them a bit smaller. What that will do is it will make your Father Christmas just lean back slightly, and then this will counterweight it. It's all science. I don't quite know how it works myself, but it does work. And there you go. Your very own Son of Man by Magritte based 
Father Christmas surreal decoration. It's kind of stupid, but I kind of like it. If you make your own, please do share them with me, like these two very Christmassy ones up here. And there you go. Enjoy. Let's have another joke. Why didn't Santa's helper turn up for work? He was elf-isolating! <laughs> It's time for our featured artist. Now we're going to be learning a little bit, and it's going to be ever so slightly educational, <laughs> about an artist called L.S. Lowry. One minute artist, L.S. Lowry. L.S. Lowry was a British artist born in Stratford, Manchester in 1887. He is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial regions of Northwest England, and his pictures contain factories, houses, chimneys, and lots and lots of people. The people that he drew and painted had a very distinctive, simple style, and a lot of people called them matchstick men. Lowry made pictures of everyday life, like going to work, going to the market to shop, or even going to football matches. Lowry holds the record for turning down British honours, something he did five times, including turning down a knighthood. The LS in LS Lowry stands for Lawrence Stephen. A lot of art critics thought that Larry was a pretty rubbish artist, but he never cared what other people thought of him and just carried on painting. One of my favourite Lowry quotes is, You don't need brains to be a painter, just feelings. And that is LS Lowry in a minute! Now, I picked L.S. Lowry for our featured artist because his scenes always look quite wintry and there's lots of snow on the ground. Oh, actually, before we go any further, we made a song about L.S. Lowry, me and a good friend of mine, Harriet Brain, who's a very funny musical comedian, and the song goes something like this. There's a place with a chimney and a steeple Rows of houses and lots of little people A man with a pram and some barking dogs too A boy is looking closely at the sole of his right shoe What's the matter? Are his laces undone? Or has he trodden something from a cocker spaniel's bump? This painting isn't colourful, fancy or flowery This masterpiece was made by a man called Ellis Lowry Lowry, Lowry, Lowry You painted lots of really busy scenes Lowry, Lowry, Lowry Depressing version of Where's Wally? Distant houses, a grey roof and a brick wall Everyone is rushing on their way to watch the football Everyone is rushing except for that one dawdler These people look as though they have been painted by a toddler A winter scene with a row of terraced houses Some of the people looking just like giant mouses Don't get me wrong, I think these paintings all look real nice Instead of giant mouses, I know I should have Said mice. Lowry, Lowry, Lowry. I tried to count all the people in your scene. Lowry, Lowry, Lowry. But I got bored and gave up after sixty three. Lowry, Lowry. Did you enjoy that? It was good, wasn't it? Anyway, 
I was saying before, I picked L.S. Lowry because his scenes are all wintry and cold and there's lots of people and we're going to make our own L.S. Lowry, although it could take quite a while drawing all of those people, but I have got an amazing tip to save us a load of time. It's really good fun and it's great technique as well you can use for all sorts of other stuff. What you'll need is a, like a rubber, plain rubber, I've got a few there, and just a plain old black biro there and a sheet of paper of course. What we're going to do first is the kind of the scenery. Now his scenery was always quite um, industrial and you'd have factories and houses. I like actually his ones where they're going to the football, so I might draw a football stadium. The stand in the background kind of going like that, down to there, and perhaps. I mean this, you can do whatever you want. You can do houses, you can do chimneys. And it doesn't have to be like dead neat or anything like that. Just lots of lines. And we'll do the gates underneath the football stand. So kind of just draw lots of lines, lots of buildings, some windows in here. This is the football stand, so I'll draw some lines coming down like this. Like it's a wood panelled, old fashioned stand. And I'll draw some kind of bits in there and some gates where people come into the football ground. And I'm being quite quick over this, but you can obviously take your time. Uh, I'll do a little row of houses as well, I think. And Lowry's artwork. It was quite simple. It was quite uh, simplistic and it didn't really have to be that three dimensional. He wasn't too concerned about perspective and angles and fancy words like that. He just kind of drew what he saw and he didn't really care if people didn't like it. He just got on and did it. And that's why I kind of like him as well. He's a bit of an art rebel. I do like him. There we go. Let's do some chimneys because he did like chimneys and we can do some smoke coming out of those chimneys and perhaps in the background there we can do like another row of houses. These could be like a bit more like straight up and down. Some chimneys on top. Like I say, I'm being very, very quick over this. You can obviously take your time. Do your scenery in the top kind of part of your page and do a little floodlight here so you can kind of tell that it's a football stadium and I'll do some like factory shapes in the background in the distant background there perhaps a couple more I'll do some more lines on this I mean you can add as much or as little as you like if you want to add some like street lamps things the post box there. Now we have got all of this space here to fill with people. That could take quite a while, but this is where my little trick comes in. What you're going to do, and don't worry about ruining these rubbers because it comes off completely. What you do, you draw a little figure, perhaps give him a little arm there, and then like a little head. And it's going to be walking, so I'll do a leg bending backwards and a leg going forwards with a big shoe there and a big shoe there. And once you've done that figure, we're going to use this and hopefully, if I press down on it, it'll print out. And we should be able to get four, I mean it's getting a bit faint, but once you've got four out of it, then what you can do is just trace the lines I mean, you could give it longer hair the next time if you wanted, and you could make the hat slightly different. And then hopefully, we'll get a few more out of that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go the other way around. So I'll draw someone going this way around, and I'll make them a bit smaller, I think. And Lowry's figures were like stick figures, so it doesn't have to be like really intricate and complicated. It can just be as simple as that. And then we will put that person there. Be aware if you're pressing down on the other side, you might 
get ink on your thumb and your scene will very quickly start to fill up. Let me do a few more. What you can also do is perhaps add some smaller ones in. It's like a little cluster of people. We can perhaps put these in the background. There you go, a little group of people there. And a little group of people there. And some people there. Imagine how long it would have taken to draw all of these. You do have to press down quite hard. I might go back to this one actually and draw some people a bit smaller behind him. And like I say, once you've done this, hopefully, <laughs> he says, it should all wash off and you can use your rubber again. And what you can do, you can go over some of these with your biro and you can make them a little bit more individual. So for example, if you want this one here to be walking a dog, you just draw a little dog shape on there. And it doesn't have to be like perfect. If you remember Lowry's dogs kind of just looked a bit like dogs. And if you wanted to, for example, you could have this one carrying like a suitcase, this one pushing a pram. baby in the pram and a couple of wheels and if there are any that haven't come out quite as well you can and go around them Oops. he's walking his dog and the dog's going the other way now I think that's enough people I'm now gonna color mine in I'm gonna use my paints to color this in those here or some like watercolory type paints and Lowry's colors were kind of a bit browny and a bit kind of let's see how this goes a little test over there uh, just add whatever color you like really oh there we go a nice brown color And then you can colour in your individual people. I'm going to put this in fast forward. Hopefully it'll look good. And there you have it, your very own LS Lowry wintry scene. I would love to see all of yours. If you do try one yourself, make sure you get your mum or your dad to share it with me using the hashtag Olaf Art. Grab a pencil, grab a brush, we're about to do Art Club. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned that recently I got to work with the jolly, lovely celebrity chap Rylan. He was fantastic and we had loads of good fun making Christmassy stuff out of Play-Doh and the people at Play-Doh they sent me loads of lovely Play-Doh and I got tons of it left over and I'm going to show you how to make a Play-Doh Christmas tree. Hopefully it'll look a bit like this. I mean I've not made one for a couple of weeks so it might not look like that but I will tell you all about the sausage technique. So it's like you make a sausage and then you curl it up and it's going to be a lot of fun. If you haven't got Play-Doh uh, other modelling dough things are available. You can use earwax, I suppose. Uh, I'm not sure. Or you can just sit and watch me do it, and that could be quite fun. Who knows? Uh, let's start with our green. I'm going to get this green play dough out. Come on, out you come. Getting it out of the tub is probably the most difficult part of this. And once you've got it, we're going to make it into a long sausage. So I'm going to roll this into a long, even sausage shape. Come on. And I'm going to make one end into a bit of a point. And that is going to be our base where we start. And then I'm going to try and just even that bit out a bit. And I'll probably make this one come to a point a bit as well. 
And the gist of it is that once you have got your sausage nice and long and even, you then coil it up into a kind of a Christmas tree shape. Now, the base is gonna be that kind of size. It's a bit of guesswork, to be honest with you. Might make it a bit bigger than that. And then, what you can do is if you've made it too long, your sausage, you can always trim a bit off at the end. But that's looking good. And then you sort of coil it around, and you coil it around, you can coil a bit tighter there, until you get to the top, and it's kind of a Christmas tree shape. And give it a little squeeze and a little pat together just to make sure your sausage sticks together. And that is gonna be the basis of our Christmas tree. Uh, you'll see in the bottom there, there's a little hole. Now we are gonna stick our Christmas tree as though it's in a bucket. But what we're actually gonna do is make the bucket go in the hole as well as there. So I'm gonna use the red for my bucket. And if I get out, again, getting it out is always tricky for me. It smells lovely, don't eat it. And what we're gonna do here, the bucket shape is gonna be a ball. So we'll make a ball, except we want it to fit in that hole there. So it's gonna be a ball with a flat bum flat bottom to the ball. Oh, we've not had the bouncing bum yet. Let's have the bouncing bum. Isn't it Christmassy? There we go. So we make the bottom of this ball flat, like so, and then we'll make the top pointed so it kind of fits in that hole there. Now that looks massive to me. So. I might have to start again or just trim a bit off. Let me just trim a bit off. So if I just trim that bit off, put one back in there, and we'll keep the flat bottom and we'll mold it into a point again. And hopefully now that won't be so massive. I mean, it still looks quite big to me. One more trim. Take your time over it at home. Up to a point. Third time lucky. Is this gonna look too big? Ah, oh, look at that, perfect. So that now looks good. It looks like our Christmas tree is sat in a bucket there. What we need to do now is to decorate it. Now, I've got lots of different colors here that are open. I've got some blues and yellows and pinks and purples. And if you've just made uh, a round dot like so and tried to stick it on, it doesn't stick on very well. So what I do, I get a pen or pencil, pencil's probably better, and I go along my Christmas tree and I make little holes like so. And then I fill those little holes with baubles, except the baubles aren't just little flat circles. They actually have a little, almost like a tooth. They have like a little root that kind of goes in. I'll show you what I mean. Here you go, I'll do one. So for example, if I make a little round bauble like so, but I make one of the ends, I kind of roll it. So it's got like a little kind of tail, like a teardrop almost. And then the tail of the teardrop goes in there and then when you push it down, it kind of stays in a bit more solid. And what you need to do is go around, make lots of dots in your tree, and then fill them all with lots of different colored ones of these. And then what you finally do at the very end is a dot in the middle at the top, and we will put in a star or something that looks relatively star-shaped on top. I'm gonna put this in fast forward now because you don't wanna sit and watch me do all this, do you really? I didn't think so.
And there you have it, your very own Play-Doh Christmas tree. I mean, it's kind of a bit like every Christmas tree I've ever owned. It's kind of leaning to the side a bit, but I mean, that's not bad, is it? And that kind of sausage curling technique, there's something you didn't think you'd be hearing just before Christmas, the sausage curling technique. That sausage curling technique, it can be used for uh, Christmas trees, but you can make all sorts of other stuff using that technique. You can use it to make things like, here's some I made earlier, some uh, vanilla ice cream there in a cone, or perhaps some chocolate ice cream that has fallen out of its cone. Mmm. Anyway, make sure you do share them with me, share them with the hashtag OlafArt, and I think we're done here. Let's have another joke. What is the most 2020 Christmas carol? Hark the social distancing. <laughs> You might remember from the very beginning of the show, we were drawing a distant cousin of Rudolph. Uh, it looks a bit like this. Hopefully you've got that still with you. Now, the next bit we're gonna do is the body. Nice and easy, really. It's gonna have quite a small body with a massive head on because I haven't left much room. Uh, we'll start by doing two curved lines like so. And he's gonna have like a kind of a circular thing with a bell on it. I don't even know what it's called. It's like a collar, a collar. There we go, that's probably the word. <laughs> All of this Christmas stuff is making me lose my words. There we go. We do that like that. And we do a little bell here. And we do a dot in the bell. And a line going like that. And we do a little ring that connects the bell to his collar, like so. And what you can do, actually, where's my little thinner brush? Because I can add some details with this one. Do some little circles. And I can colour these kind of studs in gold when I come to colouring in. Now, on his neck here, I'm going to do like a kind of a, a different coloured shape. I mean, when I'm colouring it in, this will be a different colour. And it's kind of going to be a light patch on his neck there. So just draw a little, almost like a flame that looks like, I suppose. Now he is going to be eating. So I'm going to have, actually, let's do the body first. Then we'll have him eating. Let's not get that out of order. So the body, he's got quite a small squat square shaped body. It goes a bit like that. So a bit of a curvy kind of square underneath. And we'll do his little legs first as well. Uh, the legs, two curved lines like that. A little flat bit there and a little flat bit there. Now we do like a little step. You'll see he has hooves. So a little step like that and then back in. And then we do the opposite way. Let me just extend that a little bit. We do the opposite way so that step like that and then curves back in. And we'll draw one arm curving around like that. And again, he's got little hooves. I don't quite understand how he holds stuff, but he will be holding something in his other hoop. So they have to use your artistic license or suspend your disbelief or whatever. It, I, I don't know what these words mean, kids. Nuts. Right, uh, the next arm we are gonna do, he's gonna be holding up something that he is gonna be eating. Uh, what do you like to eat over Christmas? I know I can hear you all shouting, Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts, because they're a big favorite, aren't they? Uh, this particular reindeer, he is eating a mince pie. So I'll do his hoof, and he's gonna be kind of balancing on that hoof, a little mince pie. And there's gonna be a, a bit of a chunk taken out of it. I might, because I'm gonna get a bit more detail, I might just use this pen. So there's gonna be like a bite mark taken out of this mince pie, and some of the filling falling out. And then this is like the the trimming, and this is the pastry lid of his mince pie. There we go. And the thing with this reindeer is, he's rude. His name is Dolph, but he is rude Dolph. And he is rude in lots of different ways. Uh, one of the ways that he is rude is that he talks 
whilst he's eating. He talks with his mouth full and you shouldn't do that. So I'm going to have him saying, let's get my other, I've got another pen. Where's my other pen? This one's quite good for writing letters when it hasn't run out of ink. So I'm going to have him saying, what a splendid mince pie. And then I'm going to draw a bubble. Do you remember from art club? I used to say, always do the words first and then do the speech bubble around it. That way your speech bubble will always fit and you won't ever run out of space. Always a good tip that is. There you go, what a splendid mince pie. Uh, and because he's really rude, I might even have him doing a burp. Uh, let's have a burp. Burp. Don't burp, it's rude. And I mean, if he's gonna be even more rude, I'll, I'll have him doing a, a little, squeaking out a little festive fart. Uh, let's do that over here. And it's gonna go in kind of like that, which is spelt P F F. Uh, uh, another F and a P, I think. And around that, we're going to put a, a little fart bubble, which is like a cloud. You can have yours being as rude or as not very rude as you like. And if you want them to be doing a little festive fart, a little squeaky out one like that, you can do. I mean, you don't have to if you want to make your reindeer look a lot nicer. Uh, right. I am gonna give him some, actually because Rudolf is from Bavaria in Germany, I'm gonna give him some Lederhosen. He got exiled there, he was in Lapland and then they sent him there because he was just too rude. And then, I'm not saying Germans are rude. If there's any Germans who are watching this, you're not rude at all, honestly. Dig myself out of a hole there. Give him some, some German shorts, Lederhosen. I can colour these in later. And give him a little shirt as well. Well, you have one shirt there. And give him some little shorts there. Oh, I nearly forgot the hooves at the bottom there. So, a little split in the hoof there, and a little split in the hoof there, and a little split in the hoof there, and a little split in the hoof there. And if you like, you can add in some kind of little texture lines. I always like to add in some texture lines, especially with this brush pen. Really good for doing texture lines. You know what? I think we're done there. All you need to do now, obviously, is sign your name and then colour it in. So I'm going to sign my name first. There we go. Olaf Falafel. You don't sign Olaf Falafel. You sign your own name. And make sure you get your mums and dads to share your rude Dolphs with me. And I would love to see them all. I'd love to see the many ways in which they're being rude. If you can be more inventive than me, talking with your mouth full, farting and burping, then brilliant. But I'm not encouraging any of that behaviour, by the way. I need to put that out there just in case parents get annoyed. I, I don't want your kids to be rude. I just want them to draw a rude Dolph reindeer. There we go. Uh, now, pencils. I'm going to colour this chap in. Uh, here we go. And there you have it, your very own finished drawing of Dolph, the rude cousin of Rudolph. Rudolph, you get the joke. Anyway, I'd love to see all of yours. Please make sure you share them with me. Use the hashtag Olaf Art. I'm sure you all remember Olaf Art. Uh, and I hope you all have a genuinely lovely Christmas. I think 
Uh, all I'd like you to do really is if you've enjoyed this, share it with other people. It's going to stay up online throughout. So you could even do this in summer if you really wanted to, sat on a beach somewhere in your shorts, drawing a picture of a rude reindeer. Uh, so share this with uh, anyone you know, if you think they might like it. And most of all, have a great Christmas. Actually, before I do say bye, do you remember that uh, song that I was miming to? Here we go. I mean, this is really bad and I'm ever so sorry. I'm going to apologise for this, but since there's no place to go, let us know, let us know, let us know. I mean, that is bad, isn't it? Sorry. Bye.